I'm Nicholas Whalen. Join me in discovering the domestic art of keeping animals as pets. We're talking rabbits and more as I share with you some of my pet peeves. Raising rabbits can be an exciting hobby for yourself or for your entire family. Thousands of people across Canada choose to take part in the rabbit industry by raising, breeding and even showing their own rabbits. We were fortunate enough to meet one of these people at her rabbitry here in Prince Edward Island. Take a look. Rabbit keeping dates back to the Middle Ages, but it really wasn't until the 1500s when breeds like this English lop, the king of the fancy, were established. Well, today we're meeting a rabbit fancier herself, Tracy Brown. She's the owner and breeder at Bunny Trails Pet Ranch in Hamilton, Prince Edward Island. Bunny Trails Pet Ranch is what's called a rabbitry. So a rabbitry is a professional business that breeds, sells, and competes with rabbits. I've been breeding and showing rabbits for over 20 years. I joined 4-H, so then I started showing in 4-H and uh, competing and uh, winning with competitions and winning the rabbits and after that it just became a full-blown addiction. So when you're preparing for a rabbit show, uh, sometimes it comes down to the breed. If you have a short-haired breed such as a mini rex, uh, very easy, clean the ears, clip the toenails, make sure the fur is all nice and you don't have a big molt going on. Some of the heavier uh, long-haired breeds like the Angora and the Jersey Woolies, um, it comes down to a lot of brushing, grooming, primping and priming and uh, um, most rabbits, actually no rabbit should be bathed. If you bathe the rabbit, you're actually taking all the natural oils out of their fur. Peroxide and cornstarch and a lot of making paste, rubbing it into the fur, letting it dry and brushing it out. That's kind of the best way to bath a rabbit. <laughs> um, in order to compete in a full open show, you do have to have a registered purebred tattooed rabbit. So in order to show your rabbit has to be tattooed to prove that your rabbit is the rabbit it is and it's purebred. Rabbits make really good companion animals. They actually are really good for bonding with kids. You can actually teach them to roll a ball to you. You can teach them to fetch a pencil. You can teach them to walk on a harness and a leash. And there are competitions in the States where they actually jump over obstacles. Um, you've seen like horse jumping. There are many obstacle um, competitions that they do with rabbits. So rabbits are much, much smarter than people think. The first thing I would consider is when you're purchasing a rabbit, um, make sure who you're purchasing it for. Are you purchasing it for a kid that's first of all old enough to take the responsibility? Um, there's you know, if your kid's not going to take the responsibility, are you willing to take the responsibility to make sure that rabbit is fed and cleaned? I really have issues with people that buy rabbits for Easter. Easter is not the time to buy a pet rabbit. Uh, it gets lost in the shuffle and within a month is it as exciting as it was on Easter Day. So you want to make sure that the breed you're getting is going to be the size when it's full grown because a rabbit will get full grown within a year that it's something that your child can you know, take care of, can manage, can pick up. Most popular breeds we have is the Mini Rex, and they run to about three and three quarter, four pounds, and they're what's called the Velveteen Rabbit, so they are actually missing the top coat of fur. So their fur feels like you feel it, you're rubbing a velour coat. It's very soft, it's very dense. They come in about 29 different colors, so there's lots of variety, and they're very, very friendly. Um, the other breed we have is the Jersey Woolly, which is about two and a half pounds. It's almost like a miniature Angora. It's kind of a long haired dwarf. They are a little high strung. The smaller the breed, the more high strung you're gonna get. But uh, they actually are very friendly and very easy to pick up and very kid friendly because they're, they're small and easy to carry around and handle. Uh, the other one we have is the English Lop. And they are known for their big, long 21 inch ears and they get to be about 12, 13 pounds. So realize that, yeah, and they're gonna to get to be a large animal, but their ears are very delicate, so you have to make sure you keep their toenails cut short or they will actually tear their ears. Another breed we have is the American Fuzzy Lop, which is kind of like 
the hollow knob, which is the cute ones you see that have the ears down, but these are the fuzzy ones. So they have about a two to three inch uh, wool coat. So they're really, really big and fuzzy and fluffy, but they're only about four pounds. And we also have the Flemish Giant. And he is still a baby. His father's 20 pounds. I don't know where he's gonna top out, but he's probably gonna be big. The bigger the rabbit, they tend to be more friendly, but they are one that needs a lot of space, a lot of cage room in order to uh, get enough exercise. Uh, oh, the other one we have, I guess, is the lion head, which is not a sanctioned breed. It's a breed in production, which means there are four registered breeders in the States that are now developing it, but it has not passed final inspection and final judging to be a certified breed. It's still in production right now. If you're going to get a pet rabbit, here's some basics that you're going to need. You're going to need a cage. Um, the cage should be paramount to the size of the rabbit. You don't want a small rabbit in a huge cage because they will, rabbits are curious, so they'll actually get crooked necks because they're always looking up. People will come to me and they'll say, I have one rabbit or I have two kids and I want to buy two rabbits. And I'll say, you got two cages. And they'll say, no, we're going to keep them in the same cage. And big mistake. Rabbits are not communal. Rabbits do not want to live together. They're very independent. Most of the rabbits we have for pets actually come from Europe. So they're not like the wild hares we have that actually live in warrens. They're very independent. Um, apart from that, you're going to need a water bottle. And most people will question water bottle versus water dish. Water bottle is nice and hygienic. If you have a dish that's sitting in a cage, it's going to get full of shavings. It's going to get food dumped into it. It's very hard to keep them clean and keep them full. Um, a good, healthy rabbit feed. And when I'm talking rabbit feed, you're, you're better off to spend a little more and get one of the premium feeds, the Blue Seal. The better the feed, the healthier the rabbit, the better their conditioning. And some other things you might want to look at is hay, which most people on PEI, if they know anyone who's got a cow farmer or a horse farmer, they can get that. Rabbits love toys. Anything that makes noise, anything that bangs, clangs, rings, they love it. They actually love playing with and banging things. Rabbits are still considered what's an exotic pet. So you really need to search around and make sure you get a veterinarian that is familiar with rabbits. They don't need shots. They're not like a dog or cat that you have to take in for regular shots. They actually are regularly fairly healthy. If you have them on a good feed and you have them on some nice treats and some veggies on the side, rarely you have, do you have to take them in. Rabbits make really fantastic pets. They're very sociable. You can litter train them. You can teach them to walk on a leash. And your child can have lots of fun either competing in 4-H with them and learning how to take care of a rabbit because 4-H will teach them all the way how to take care of a rabbit from the baby on up. And they can compete professionally and they can have lots of fun. So they're going to meet lots of other breeders. They're going to see lots of different types of rabbits. And they're just going to have fun days actually being out with the shows. My name's Kyle and this is Focus and you are watching Pet Peeves. Welcome back to Pet Peeves exclusively here on Eastlink TV and just before the break we were visiting the Bunny Trails Pet Ranch here in Prince Edward Island with owner uh, Tracy Brown who's with us in studio now and has brought some special guests with you. Thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome, glad to be here. So tell us about these rabbits. Uh, well the one that's Sitting right to your left there is an English Angora, and she is technically, even though she looks gray, she's called blue. So unlike some animals, uh, there are blue and gray, or just gray or blue. So how does that differ in the rabbit world? In the rabbit world, all rabbits are diagnosed uh, color-wise by their face color. Okay. Because, because this is not uh, fur, it's actually wool. It's the same that's on sheep. That's where you get your Angora sweaters. So as it grows out, it bleaches out, and as it bleaches, it loses all the, the dye pigment to it. So it's all by face color. Okay, and the other rabbit here? That is American Fuzzy Lop, and that's kind of the one of the unique colors because this is blue-eyed white. So usually when you have a white rabbit, you end up with the red eyes, mm -hmm. but these are specifically bred to have the blue eyes, which is just a genetic offset of a spot gene that shows up on their eye. Okay, so tell us about their personalities as, as, a, as a different type of, different breed of rabbit. How do they differ characteristic-wise? Uh, the fuzzy lops are really nice. They're very curious. They're very friendly. They're, they more have a, almost like a dog personality to them. They love to be around people. They're very nosy. They'll sit up on their hind legs and look around. So they actually are very interactive with kids. Yes. Um, they're easy to take care of because the fuzzy lop, even though this is a wool fur, it grows to a certain level and then it stops growing. So you don't have to shear it. You don't have to clip them. You just got to groom them. Unfortunately, these guys do have to be groomed and combed at least once a month or you end up with just a bunch of knots. 
The Angoras are really nice rabbits if you have someone who's going to be dedicated because this is something you cannot leave a couple weeks without grooming. <laughs> I can imagine. It has to be combed, it has to be clipped every three months, it has to all be sheared down. Yes. And then to grow back out again because this will get constantly, it'll get up to like eight inches long because it, ne it really never stops growing. So the problem with these breeds is if you let their wool get too long, they will actually um, ingest a lot of it because they groom themselves like a cat. But unlike a cat, they cannot spit up a fur ball because rabbits do not have the uh, reflex to, to bring anything back up again, so they swallow everything. So they actually will get up into their intestines. Mm -hmm. So these ones have to have a lot of uh, hay in their diet and stuff to actually Yeah, a very up. high fiber diets high fiber, are, yeah. are certainly exactly, important. Yeah. Yeah. From a nutritional standpoint, really what's the most optimal diet for a rabbit? Their base diet should be pellets and it should be a premium uh, pellet. And it should be one that has um, something in it, a lot of people to, to put in to take down the ammonia smell. Okay. Yeah, so um, a lot of those are more along the premium line. So you, if you're gonna get a rabbit feed, you know, I would suggest you do go to one of your higher end areas to pick it up in your higher end um, stores to, to buy it as opposed to one of your, your big bulk stores. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, rabbits do need to have a hay, some kind of roughage. Um, Timothy hay is really good. Alfalfa is a little soft, so you're looking to have a more of a Timothy hay that's got more of a grinding factor when it goes through their intestinal tract. And um, you can do treats. The things with rabbits is you do not want to have too much of their uh, base diet being lettuce and leaf greens because it does cause um, intestinal problems because there's just too much moisture and water going through. So you can feed them apples, you can feed them carrots, you can feed them celery. Celery is really good and you can, and rabbits are really fanatical about bananas. They absolutely love bananas. Yeah. The other thing you can do for treats um, as opposed to buying fancy chocolate treats that they have for rabbits and stuff to train them, just go get a box of Cheerios or Shreddies. Those are one of the best ways to train a rabbit to come to you for a treat and mm -hmm. to interact with your kids. And it's really healthy for them as well. That's awesome. Um, so talk to me a little bit about the grooming process behind rabbits. I mean, most people who have a pet rabbit, I'm not sure they're quite as aware of the whole grooming process as you as a rabbit fancier, if you will, uh, would be. So talk to us about how you groom, groom these animals. The best way to groom is groom them from the base forward. Mm -hmm. So when you groom you want to pull their fur this what way. What type of way. brush are you using? This is a slicker brush. Okay. Yeah. So it's got its little pins are got notched on the end. Yes. So they come up so they come up in a little kind of a prick point and that makes them easy to grab the fur. You don't want to use anything that's really really hard hard on a rabbit because rabbits have really delicate skin and you can actually if you pull too hard you can you can tear and mm -hmm. you can pull the fur right out of that skin. Um, the other thing you might want to use is a small comb. Uh, right, this one is actually just a small face comb or some people will sell them off as their like flea combs. We'll use them as face combs because you don't want anything like this heading for a rabbit's face. It's going to really scare them. So you want something small that if you were brushing up around their face that they're not going to spook from. So yeah, and most thing with rabbits is you want to make sure you're brushing from the base of the fur out. So you want to pull the fur up and then brush down. And then that way what you're doing is if you're just doing this, which is great, but if there's knots down below, you're not going to reach them. It's really to get all the knots, you want to pull the fur forward and brush down. Now, so is this something the they mind, Tracy, or is it fairly easy to groom uh, a rabbit? Rabbits are actually really good for grooming if you start them young. Mm -hmm. It's basically something that rabbits have to be handled from youngsters as well. So the more a rabbit is handled, the more it's used to being handled, the more it's going to put up with the handling. And the same with the brushing. If you brush them on a regular basis, they will just sit there and they get used to it. Especially if you're looking at some of these wool breeds. The wool breeds, they get to the point that they don't even, they don't mind it. They actually like being brushed. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing is when you get around to their faces, you don't want anything big, so you do want something that's going to be small. So that you can just do around their faces. And most of these fur breeds are going to have kind of a little puff on top mm -hmm. that does get knotted, so you want to make sure you get that out. From a pet perspective, is it better to have a male or female rabbit? If you're going to have a rabbit in the house, you probably want to start with a female. Males can be, when they hit um, a certain age, they may start to spray. 
And so unless you're gonna get your rabbit neutered young, you wanna start off with a female. And female also gives you the option, if you have more than one kid, of adding more rabbits. Great, Fresh. thank you for bringing these guys in. When we come back after the break, Tracy is gonna introduce us to some of her exotics, exotic animals that she has at her ranch as well. We'll be right back. It's been another busy week at the PEI Humane Society and joining me is Tim Sheepins, Animal Protection Officer with the shelter and Squirt. So Tim, I know that volunteers are in great need at the shelter here. Can you tell us a little bit about what they do and how people can get involved? Certainly. Volunteers are a big part of our, the work that we do here at the shelter. Um, you can certainly volunteer inside of the shelter if you want to. Um, you can choose whether you want to help with the cats or with the dogs, it's up to you. Um, but there's also plenty to do with outside of the shelter. Um, we do organize a lot of special events and fundraisers where we can all, always use a little bit of help. Um, also we're looking for uh, anybody that would be able to foster any of our animals if they need a little bit of a stay over with somebody else before they come back to the shelter to be adopted. And while cash donations I know are always welcome, not everyone can afford to give money out of pocket. So you exactly. know, giving of your time is also of, of great benefit. So For something sure. super to think about. Um, if you'd like to learn more, you can log on to their website at peihumanesociety.com or give them a call at 892-1190. Welcome back to Pet Peeves on Eastlink TV and joining me is Tracy Brown from the Bunny Trails Pet Ranch here in Prince Edward Island and we're joined with some of her exotic animal friends. Tracy, tell us what we have here. This little guy? That is Bridget and she is an African pygmy hedgehog. And she is full grown so they're not as big as the European hedgehogs. Okay, and the European being a little bit bigger and what else is the... The European would be about three times the size of that. Yes. Yeah. So the Europeans would be the ones you would find uh, walking around the garden ways of England. So these animals look rather intimidating. Obviously they have these quills, much like a porcupine would, but how, you know, do they make good pets? Hedgehogs do make good pets. Their quills are not uh, strong enough that they could puncture the skin. Yes. They're actually just modified hairs covered with keratin, a heavy coat of keratin. So it's almost like putting too much gel in your hair. That's what their quills I have feel that like. problem on some days, there you Tracy. Go. <laughs> So what you do is, yeah, and you're petting her the wrong way, uh, the right way is actually as long as you pet them from the head down, that's the way the quills grow. Yes. And that's the way they, if you, if you go the other way, you will get pricked a little bit. And what yeah. type of setup do they require if you're going to have one as a pet? They do require a good size guinea pig cage. Yes. They are very curious, so they're very nosy. They like a lot of toys and stuff to be put in the cage. They can bounce around, push around. They are nocturnal, so that's something to consider if you're getting one for a kid. They don't usually get up until about 10 o'clock at night. So, I mean, it's not going to be something that your kid's going to be able to play with all day long. And they cannot be left alone walking around. They, have to, they do have to be kept in a cage because they are insectivores, so they will pick up insects and stuff. And you don't want them picking up any insects that are on the floor of your house just in case there's some kind of chemicals or anything on them. And what do they eat? They, my guys are fed a premium um, chow that I get from the zoo, but you can also feed them a premium ferret diet or a premium um, cat diet, as long as it is high protein, because they do need a high protein base in their diet. And they also eat eggs, they love chicken, they love turkey, boiled turkey, boiled chicken, and they also like yogurt and stuff as well, and fruits and vegetables. Oh, very nice. And what about the one you have here? This is Keto, and he is my ferret, and ferrets are related to minks, so they do have that uh, wonderful sm ferret smell. Musky? Yeah, so you do have to realize if you're getting a ferret, there is going to be the smell. And it doesn't matter how many times you bath a ferret, it's, you're not going to get rid of it. So, you know, there's no sense in, in bathing your ferret all the time. And these guys are very high energy, high um, interest. So they want to be playing with you all the time. So if you have one ferret, you do have to realize that you're going to have to give them a lot of attention a lot of your time because they are like having a little child running around. You do have to ferret-proof your house as well and which means you have to put locks on things, you have to put uh, things up high out of the way because everything in your house is fair game and everything is a toy to a ferret and mm -hmm. they do tend to swallow things. If they're not supervised, they can pick up tiny stuff like earrings, jewelry and stuff and swallow it. So. Now we also have, I think the most bizarre thing we have here at the table is this Richardson ground squirrel. Yes. Now tell us about it. Richardson ground squirrels are a cousin of the prairie dog. 
and they come from the southern United States. So they do have the prairie dog body type, that they have a small head and a big, large body. So many people around here in Atlanta, Canada especially, would kind of recognize it as being somewhat like a groundhog on a it smaller is. scale. Yeah, it is the miniature version of the groundhog. Yeah. And they do whistle the, in the, where they come from, they live in a gigantic colony, so they whistle to protect each other. So now this is one that usually, unless you have a permit, most uh, people in Fish and Wildlife are probably not going to let you just randomly go out and get. You have to check with your Fish and Wildlife in your area to make sure that you can have these. Sure. Because uh, they are more of the higher end exotics. Now he looks a little bit obese, but I think that's just his body type. This is her body type. She is made like a triangle because what they do in the wild is they will dig a hole. If you look, you can see they got really, really long claws. And what they'll do is they'll dig a hole big enough for their head to get through, and then they spend the rest of the time pushing their whole body through, and that's what makes the hole bigger. Mm -hmm. So they're streamlined as a, basically as a battering ram in order to get through the holes and make the big tunnels under the ground where they live. Now, does he have any special, or she have any special needs? These guys are actually very good. They do need a large cage that has the ability for them to burrow into the substrate. So they need something they can dig under. They need like homes and, and logs and stuff that they can burrow under. Now, does that stuff. mean they should or should not have shavings? Is there a different type of substrate that's These perhaps guys, better? These guys, mine do have shavings mixed with peat moss. Okay. It's a combination yes. that so they can actually, so one section of the cage has shavings and one section is almost like a split in half and half is peat moss. Mm -hmm. And then so they can burrow and they can play and stuff like that. These guys do eat a lot of nuts and stuff. Will you be nice? And uh, so they're more uh, towards the squirrel mix. So they eat a lot of squirrel kind of ration and stuff like that. They're not um, big on fruits, but they do need a lot of leafy greens. Now we also have a daegu. Yep. So if you can't get one of these, this is kind of an, a nice close alternative that is something that is readily available. And daegus are kind of a ground squirrel from South America. And they're very, very, very friendly. Mm -hmm. They're kind of an alternative to the hamster because they do live about seven years, so they're a long-term pet. But they're also one that, like, they love to be handled. They don't run away. They will actually sit on your shoulder and hang out with you. They're very, very friendly. But these guys are diabetics. So these guys, you have to be very careful what you feed them. They can't have fruits and vegetables, and they can't have raisins. They can't have sugary, dehydrated fruit. Mm -hmm. They have to have a very special diet that does not have a lot of sugar in it. That's awesome. So what advice would you give to anyone at home that might be watching, considering an exotic animal as a pet? Um, some do make good pets, mm -hmm. some perhaps not. But what advice would you give to our viewers? Do your research. Really learn exactly everything you can find out about the animal that you're interested in getting. Um, Research the breeders. Research, and uh, if you can, there's a lot of chat rooms where you can go on and talk about the different animals. And really consider your lifestyle, because some of these animals are nocturnal. Some of these animals need high energy partners that are gonna play with them a lot. Uh, and some of these ones are more laid back, so you really have to know. It's almost like you're gonna get a, a dog or a cat. You really need to know what you can afford to give time-wise to one of these animals. Great, well thank you very much for stopping by, Tracy, and thanks for opening your doors to us earlier this year to come out and visit. Well great, it was fun. That's all for this episode of Pet Peeves here on Eastlink TV. Please join us again next time.